Now, Dr. Wong Siu Kim, and after the questions. Alguém esqueceu essa pasta lá no restaurante? Com anotações, não tem nome na pasta. Mais um aviso, para optar por um desses horários, aqui para, voo, para, para vans para o aeroporto internacional do Rio, é, finesa procurar na lista aqui a, a Michele. Né? Ah, ok. Nós estamos com a tabela de horário de, de vans para o aeroporto internacional do Rio de Janeiro. Né, dia 28 de novembro, 13 horas, 15 horas e 21 horas. E no dia 29 de novembro, 6 horas, 12 horas, 19 horas e 20 horas. Então, para optar por um desses horários, só vou colocar o um nome na lista aqui, aqui com a secretaria do evento. Com Michelle. Michelle. Ok, Michelle. Obrigado. Pois so, não? Mr. Chairman... Do you interest me? Dr. Wong, por okay. favor. Thank you. 안녕하십니까. Don't worry about the translation. I'm not going to present in Korean. From now on, I can speak English. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Wong Seo Kim from Korea Ocean Research and Development Institute. And I'm a former director of Marine Resources Research Department. I was a biologist, but now I'm working on uh, working more on administration work rather than the scientific work. Well, originally, Dr. Jungkook Kang, the president of Korudi, was supposed to present on the uh, Korea's effort. Where is my slide? Uh, on the title of Korea's effort to develop uh, marine mineral resources in this seminar. But due to his busy schedule, I will do that on behalf of him. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank International Civil Authority and Brazilian government for invitation. Uh, it's the first time for me to visit Rio de Janeiro the famous uh, city for the 1992 the summit regarding to the environmental issues. And I think the Copacabana Beach is too beautiful to keep the participants in the seminar room. <laughs> but fortunately, today we have uh, rainy days. <laughs> well, Brazil is a special country to Korea. Well, in the morning, the Dr. Ibu Huke mentioned the Jill Baron, the famous novelist, the French uh, novelist, about 150 years ago. Uh, he wrote another science fiction titled Journey to the Center of the Earth. Probably all of you know that novel. If you drill or dig the Earth to the center, and keep continuing, then you will come out to Korea. <laughs> that means Korea is located in the exactly opposite side of the globe. So that means well, the day-night time is totally reverse, and the season also reverse. So it's time for me to get out some sleep. So if I fell in a sleep during the presentation, please wake me up. <laughs> okay, I will briefly introduce the Korudi, Korea Ocean Research and Development Institute, uh, which I'm working in. Well, the Korudi is the research institute supported by the Korean government. And we have about 500 employees among them, about 300 uh, has 
have the doctoral degrees on oceanography, physics, chemistry, geology, and biology, and engineering, engineering even the economies and the law of the sea. And the headquarters is located in Ansan city. It's very close to Seoul, the capital city of Korea. And we have three branches. One is in Daejeon. I know some of you know the Daejeon city. It's a, well, lots of the research institutes of Korea get together in the city. And two other branches uh, in the southern coast, and the other one is in the east coast. And also we have uh, joint research centers in Jingdao, uh, China, and the one in the Federate State of Micronesia for tropical research. And also we have two uh, research stations, one in Antarctica, the Sejong, King Sejong stations for Antarctic research. The, the other one is in the Svalbard Islands in Norway for Arctic studies. Okay, next please. Well, <clears throat> I know that uh, many participants of this seminar uh, has a scientific background, but uh, many of you well, doesn't have any scientific background. So I'm gonna start with my talk with a little bit of scientific background. Well, by this time, all of you well, have already know that the three kinds of uh, deep sea bed mineral resources, because well, every speaker mentioned this. So the manganese nodules uh, is found in abyssal plain uh, with the water depths of uh, 4,800 to 5,200 meters. And the uh, manganese nodule contains uh, various metals and metal contents is here. I'm not gonna mention in detail. And the values of manganese nodules uh, is about 300 to 900 uh, US dollars per ton. And the cobalt-rich crust uh, is found in seamount areas with a water depth of 800 to 2,000 meters. And the cobalt-rich crust contains nickel, cobalt, copper, and platinum. And its value is uh, from about 300 to up to 1,000 US dollars per ton. And the sea floor massive sulfide deposit is found in mid-ocean reach or trench with water depths from 250 to 3,200 meters. And it contains uh, gold, silver, zinc, and copper. And this value is from, well, about 500 to well, over 1,300 US dollars per ton. Next, please. Next, please. Okay, here is a trend of metal demands uh, in Korea. Well, since Korea has poor mineral resources, we have to import most of them from overseas to maintain its stable economic growth. The problem is that self-sufficient rate of metals in Korea have gradually decreased from 16.4% uh, in 1983 to 0.55 in 2000. And we expect that the self-sufficiency rate drop down to 0.04 in 2010. It's a terrible situation to Korea. And the data uh, indicate that we'll depend on our demanding metals totally from foreign imports uh, in the near future. And we spend a lot of money to import the metals. For example, we spend 683 uh, million US dollars in 1983 and more than 5,000 US dollars in 2000. 
and it'll increase about uh, three times in 2010. Next, please. One more click. Uh, to overcome such uh, problems of mineral supplies, the Korean government considered the explo exploration, exploitation of deep sea mineral resources as an alternative option for long-term stable supply of major strategic metals and decide to build up our own technological abilities for the development of deep sea mineral resources. The Korean government decided to initiate deep sea bed mineral exploration programs in early 1980s. Such effort finally led us to become the seventh pioneer uh, investor country by registra registering the exclusive exploration area for manganese nodules to the United Nations in 1994. I will talk about history of developing marine mineral resources in detail from the following slide. Next, please. Next, please. The period from 1982 to 1991 is an introducing stage. The Korean government decided to initiate deep sea bed mineral exploration program in early 1980s, as I told you before. The year of 1982 is considered as the starting point of Korea's deep sea bed mineral development. Adoption of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea in 1982 was the trigger for the Korean government to start the deep sea bed mineral development. Korea's first survey for deep sea bed minerals was conducted in the Clarion Clipperton Fracture Zone in 1983 by the Korea Ocean Research and Development Institute. After initial prospecting in 1983, however, the Korean government deferred any immediate actions mainly due to the legal and political uncertainties, including the mine site conflict among the potential pioneer claimants and the ambiguity of the term of pioneer activities. No, the previous, not yet, the previous one. Previous slide, please. In 1989, Cordy Resume Survey Program for Deep Sea Bed Mineral Resources and carried out three year joint exploration with the United States Geological Survey, focusing on the Cobalt Ridge Crust in the Marshall Islands and Micronesian Islands and manganese nodules in the Clarion Clipperton Fracture Zone. This joint survey program was funded by the Korean government and USGS. The period from 1992 to 1994 is an entering stage. As the Korean government finally decided to develop deep sea bed minerals in 1991, the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy launched a full-scale national program in 1991 for the exploration of manganese nodules. Kurudi was designated as a major operating institute for this program and conducted ocean policy researches related to the deep sea mining and regional exploration for the manganese nodules in the Clarion Clipperton Fracture Zone. The Korea Institute of Geology, Mining and Materials, KIGAM, I know a couple of the Brazilian scientists have a uh, relationship with the KIGAMs for the joint research. And the Korea Mining Promotion Corporation joined the CORDI to cooperate in the survey programs. With the acquisition of a research vessel on Nuri in 1992, the CORDI strengthened its capacity for surveying the deep seabed resources 
and related environmental studies more efficiently with the state-of-the-art deep sea bed survey equipment. At the end of 1993, Korea finally selected 300,000 square kilometers of commercially prospective deep sea bed mining area based on the result of the past six years' exploration in the area of more than 1.3 million square kilometers. The Korean application for registration as a pioneer investor was approved by the General Committee of the 12th resumed session of the Preparatory Commissions on the 2nd of August 1994. As a result, Korea secured the exclusive exploration area of 150,000 square kilometers for the manganese nodules as a Korean registered area. Next, please. The period from 1995 to 2002 is a take stage. In this period, manganese nodal program was mainly focused on the resources potential assessment to implement the scheduled relinquishment of the Korean registered area. During eight years of detailed regional survey in the Korean registered area, Korea successfully conduct conducted three steps of relinquishment and finally selected the Korean contract area of 70, 75,000 square meters in 2002 for further detailed explorations. 75,000 square meters is pretty big areas to Korea. It's almost two thirds of the area of Korea. I know the Brazil is a big country, but the Korea area is too small. So it's a huge areas to us. Manganese Northern Reserve in the Korea contract area is estimated uh, 510 million ton, which can be mined for 100 years at a yearly production rate of 300 million tons. If we mine uh, 300 million ton per year, the recovered metals are estimated to have a value of 1.5 billion US dollars based on 2002 metal price. In 1996, the Korean Deep Sea Bay Mineral Development Program was transferred to the Ministry of Maritime Affairs and Fisheries, a newly established ministry of the government. The birth of MOMAP provides a good opportunity to facilitate mining and processing technology as a part of the Deep Sea Bay Mineral Development Program and to enlarge the other programs for cobalt rich crust and seafloor massive surface. Exploration programs for cobalt rich crust and seafloor massive sulfide started in 1999 and 2002, respectively, as a long term government RD program. The period from 2003 to present is a growing stage. Since Korea determined the fi final allocated areas in 2002 for manganese nodules, Exploration has been focused on finding commercially exploitable area by using GIS-based integrated data evaluation system. Several pilot devices, such as lifting system and nodal collector, were manufactured, and we have a plan to test them in a shallow sea next year. Manganese nodal processing study was also conducted to design new refining processes. Cobalt Ridge Crust Survey was mostly conducted in the Magellan Seamount area of Western Pacific until 2004. However, this program was temporarily uh, suspended in 2005 uh, in order to put concentrated efforts on the research of seafloor massive sulfide, which is commercially mostly exploitable mineral resources. Also, due to the delay in the enactment of mining code for cobalt rich crust uh, in the International Civil Authority. We are currently expecting to resume our uh, crust program in 2010. Seafloor Massive Sulfide Survey was initiated in 1998 as a core of these R&D programs, and it was converted to a long-term government R&D program in 2002 as a seafloor massive sulfide is emerging as a new deep sea mineral resources to be developed 
our list among all three uh, mineral resources, such as manganese nodule and cobalt rich crust, and uh, seafloor massive sulfide. Since 2002, seafloor massive sulfide survey has been conducted in the easy of Fiji and Tonga. Recently, Korodi acquired the mineral prospecting license for seafloor massive sulfide in the area of about 19,000 square kilometers from the Tonga government in March 2008, this year. Next, please. Okay, next, please. Well, I just missed one slide. Please backward. Please backward. One more thing? Okay. Well, it's our uh, future effort to develop marine mineral resources. We'll carry on for the survey in our nodal areas for the environmental impact assessment due to commercial mining of polymetallic nodules. Our mining devices will be tested in deep water conditions and technology will be upgraded for commercial mining of polymetallic nodules. Also, mining technology for seafloor massive sulfide and crust will be developed using mining technology accumulated in the nodule areas. Although we are currently surveying seafloor massive sulfide in the easy of island nations of the South Pacific, We'll soon begin our seafloor massive sulfide exploration in open sea area of Indian Ocean. For such new challenges, Kurdi is now designing 4,000 ton class new research vessels. Next, please. Now I'm going to talk about manganese nodules in detail. <laughs> uh, polymetallic nodule contains variable metals, as I told you before, uh, average manganese content in the nodule is 27% and iron is uh, 8% and such like that. And the uh, three most valuable metals in the nodules are uh, copper, nickel, and cobalt. Its total uh, content is about 3%. Next, please. Uh, the red rectangle is a Korean manganese nodal survey areas. It's located in the Clarion Clipperton fracture zone. Uh, it's about 2,500 kilometers apart from Hawaiian Islands. Next, please. I just have three more minutes. <laughs> I'm in the middle of my presentation. <laughs> How can I do that? Okay, uh, one more click, and two more clicks, and three more clicks. Okay. Well, this slide shows brief history of manganese nodal programs. Well, I'm not going to explain in detail. I will skip to the next slide. Okay, one more click. Click again. Okay, here is the register area for the manganese nodules, and uh, it's the Korean contract areas of 75,000 square kilometers. It consists of uh, seven blocks. Next, please. Uh, it's what we are doing uh, for prospecting survey for the polymetallic nodules. Uh, we are working on the best metrics and uh, nodal distributions and the evaluation